In the course of trying to broaden the topics and books that we feature on the Bookmark program and now on Bookmark TV, we discovered our next guest. Emily Medill is a children's author. She's written several books that deal with empowerment, believe in yourself, inspiring stories for adults, and confidence building books for kids. Emily Medill is the author of such books as Sam's Magic Mirror, Reflections, Grateful Jake series, the Captain Joe series, and Hot Off the Press, Sam's Magic Mirror. You can go to the website, emilymedill.com. To talk about empowerment and how we empower youngsters, Emily joins us now live today on WNDB's Mark Bernier program. Hi, Emily. How are you? Hi, Mark. Great. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How do we empower kids, particularly at this time of the year? We want to give a positive message. There's so much that's in the news that uh, it's not pleasant. How are examples of how we empower kids? Well, I think, Mark, we can do things on a daily basis with our kids that are ordinary type things um, and with consistency, giving back and spreading kindness through small acts, whether it's opening the door for people or bringing food donations to the food bank, um, donating used toys that they're not playing with anymore, you know, doing things like that where they feel that they're a part of the bigger picture of giving back, I think is a great thing that we can do this time of year. You know, there's certain things that you mentioned, like even opening doors that we take for granted. I, I know that, that that was something we stressed with our own children, and it was not something that came naturally when I grew up. My parents actually took the time to talk to us about that, said if you see a person struggling and you're walking and you're going through a doorway, hold the door for that person or, or offer to help them. And and I, I know you have children as well, it, and they're young children, but it, it's so rewarding to see kids on their own giving back in that fashion. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Let's, uh, let's talk about gratitude a little bit, because you, you created this Jake, uh, Grateful Jake series. What were you thinking when you put that series together? Well, I think... What I, my main objective there, Mark, was just to bring it back to basics. There's so many things on a day-to-day level that we can be grateful for. Um, waking up in the morning, having breakfast, um, you know, just all being able to move our bodies and be active and, you know, all the regular things that we do every day are, are things that we can teach our children to be grateful for. It doesn't have to be a big present or a big trip or, you know, setting the bar so high that they kind of take for granted the, you know, simple pleasures in life that we're very fortunate to have. I'm, I'm thinking for the characters that are in your book, for anyone who has not seen any of the Grateful Jake books, do you demonstrate through the, uh, through the drawings, through the, the pictures of acts of a person who acknowledges something that's been given to them or something that came to them, their appreciation in Grateful Jake? Yeah, um, Isabella Bismack is an amazing illustrator. She's an animator by trade, and she illustrated the books and did a wonderful job. And it's really just Jake goes about doing regular type things like um, tending to his garden, going out to the beach, um, playing with his friends, and, and he has a homework assignment, and it's, you know, to make a list of 10 things that he's grateful for. And he, you know, feels overwhelmed by it because he feels like, hey, I'm just an ordinary kid. Like, how am I going to come up with these things? And so it just kind of goes through the weekend of him going through the regular type things that ordinary, regular people do. And then at the end, he has his aha moment and realizes that, you know, all of these regular things that he got to do throughout his day and, you know, spending time with friends and those types of things really is what brought him joy and are things that he's grateful for. You know, I know you're not a behavioral specialist, and I I don't want to mislead the public, but an observation from you as a mother as well and an author, why is it that we see, maybe it's not so much in your world, but we see so many children who do not respond when spoken to by, by adults. Is it because they haven't been taught to respond, and when someone speaks to you, you respond back? Or is it because maybe as adults we don't speak at a level that's comfortable for kids? Why do you see that happening? Yeah, I think it's a combination of those things, Mark. Like, really, I mean, kids do learn from their adults around them and through consistency and just being present. Like, I think as a parent and, you know, just being out in the world, people are so kind of busy and wrapped up in life. And... 
and we don't tend to kind of take the time to look around at the people around us and acknowledge, like, whether you're standing in a grocery store lineup or, you know, wherever you may find yourself. Like, so many people just grab their smartphones and they're distracted, and there's this real loss, I find, of personal contact out in the world. And I think adults do it, and kids are learning to do the same thing, has been my observation when I'm out in the world. Do you, uh, did you find, in, in when you put these books together, that part of this is that adults need to also reward or they need to acknowledge the successes and accomplishments of young people to help them build up that self-esteem. Does that work toward empowerment when we acknowledge a success by a youngster? I think so, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a combination of things, but it's, um, you know, consciously talking about gratitude and doing those things. We have a gratitude rock at our house, and... um, you know, we get into the tradition of bringing it out at supper time, and we'll just, it's just a simple thing, like go around, everybody hold the rock and say one thing they're grateful for. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be, you know, I got to play with so-and-so, or, you know, my husband and I tend to kind of do the deeper things, but they'll, you know, and then over time, like they kind of attach that, you know, meaning to what gratitude is. And, you know, and those are opportunities, too, where I think adults can, you know, praise their kids and say, like, hey, you know, that's really, you know, wonderful that, you know, you acknowledge that there was, you know, something good in your day. Or, you know, when they're giving compliments or when they are doing their manners, when they're not prompted <laughs> to do it, I think those are the times as parents and adults that we can, you know, praise our kids for the little things. Like, I think so often... It's the bigger things that we, you know, give our kids praise for. And, you know, sometimes the smaller things, you know, do add up, too. For our listeners who have not yet gone to emilymedill.com, she keeps a, a series of blogs and she puts something out new every week. Under the Celebrate Success by Emily Medill, there's a quote that's with pictures here. It says, celebrate what you want to see more of. Tom Peters made that quote. What was he speaking to, Emily? Um, I think it's just about, you know, that to me is kind of about gratitude as well. It's like, you know, take some pleasure in the things that, you know, the different milestones that we hit. And it's like, I think sometimes life can just get so busy and we are constantly out there, you know, trying to tick things off our list and get things done. And there's not a lot of presence sometimes that goes with that just because it's such a... Um, you know, busy world just with technology and everything else, we're constantly on. So it's, you know, for me, it's about just kind of taking a moment to breathe it in and feel grateful and celebrate the different, you know, milestones that we reach. And that can be with our kids as well, whether it's, you know, in sports or at school, um, you know, just really you know, taking that time to celebrate the uh, smaller things in life. A little bit on on uh, an anecdote here. There's a movement in this country now to move more away, a little bit away from technology. Uh, kids have these gadgets in their hands all the time. Uh, children watch a lot of television, too much television. The imagery that they see may be even damaging if they see it on a repetitive basis. Uh, if you would, share your philosophy, and I realize it's not for everyone. You put limits on television for your own children, and that's by design, is it not? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're a pretty active family, and when the kids are at home, we encourage, you know, more activities outside, or we have a rec room where the kids can be active. And, you know, of course, they do watch TV, and and they do have that as well, but my husband and I are both kind of conscious of that Um, it just seems like when we do offer it it just kind of perpetuates more of the same like it almost becomes addictive for them and I I just I didn't grow up that way I mean we were kids we were outside enjoying the fresh air and you know running free and and I kind of think that's what childhood is for I mean of course they need to know how to operate computers and you know to be current with the times I just think there definitely needs to be a balance. I mean, that's how we run it in our whole household anyways, and it seems to work well for us. Out of curiosity, too, because I'm sure that there are people listening to this discussion that can relate in some manner, do you find that your children then gravitate 
to other like-minded uh, families. In other words, uh, parents who may also have a place for technology, but they want them outside doing sports, things like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have a big group of friends, and we all discuss the topic because it is a hot topic. I mean, we were even, our kids really, most of their friends do have different, you know, PlayStations and different um smartphones and iPads and different things and so you know we're constantly evaluating that like should we and you know we almost were considering doing that this Christmas and I just you know it was kind of hot on the table and then we were like no we're not going to so I mean the boys don't know it yet but we're going to get them a basketball hoop and I mean we won't tell them (laughs) don't tell them yeah but anyways they do get to you know use it in very small doses but yeah I mean it is something that I know you know, most parents are, you know, it is a hot topic of discussion for sure. Well, I know your children are very sports minded. Your husband is sports minded as well. Um, Are you planning on any changes for the new year? This is the new year. People take stock and all right, this works, this doesn't work. We're going to maybe start the new year fresh. Are there any ideas that are coming to mind with you in terms of empowerment for children for the new year? Well, we always start out our New Year, Mark, with a family tradition of doing vision boards. So my husband and I have been doing it for years now, and last year we brought the kids in on it. So we all sit down on um, January the 1st, and we kind of just talk about our goals, and um, we write them out, you know, whether they're for my husband and I, professional goals, personal goals, health goals. And we have, and we create them with, you know, different, out pens and the boys get creative and add stickers and everything so we kind of include them in that and just kind of talk about our yearly roadmap of what we you know want to accomplish in the year and I think this year will be a good year I mean my kids are still young they're seven and four so I mean you know it's got to kind of be age appropriate but I think this year would be a good year and especially they've asked for the iPads and (laughs) they're not going to be getting them so it'll be a good (laughs) chance to kind of you know have that discussion around what that looks like for us too and you know I mean the parenting is not an easy task but you know we're constantly reevaluating it and you know including the kids in the bigger decisions that we make or at least communicating what that looks like for us with them so yeah unfortunately there's no handbook for raising nope. children. Your book series is read, is it in the school systems? Is it, I know it's available through Amazon. People can order the different books so they can go direct to your website, I believe, and, yeah. and order them. What's the, the market for? Is it for, it's age appropriate. Both are, are the two children, it's based on your real children's names and their ages. So is it it's written appropriate to their ages? Yeah, like I'd say it's about a five, uh, age five to nine years old range. Um, My educational background is in teaching as well, so I created curriculum for the Captain Joe series and the Grateful Jake series, and I targeted that at a grade two level, and that would be more to be used in the school system. And parents can also, the Grateful Jake one, I also created the lesson plan so that it could be used by just regular, you know, families at home and, you know, for homeschooling and that kind of a thing. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting because the Captain Joe books really were designed for, I'd say, like a six- to seven-year-old age range, but I have a lot of counselors that use them in their practice with adults because it's, it's almost like cognitive behavioral therapy. Like, it's just they're basic concepts that are set in a way that... Um, you know, adults that are struggling with different things. It's just another way of approaching empowerment. So that was kind of an unexpected thing that happened. Before you go, speak to the importance Mm -hmm. of conversing on a regular basis with your children or your grandchildren to give them that sense of empowerment. Um, It's something we perhaps take for granted. I know you've written about it and you've showcased it in your blogs. Can you speak to that issue? Yeah, I think open communication is always, you know, a great thing because we never know what kind of teachable moments are in there when we talk to our kids and what, you know, fears and issues and things that they have. And if we don't, you know, keep that consistency, like not just a, you know, a maintenance type thing, but to make the kids feel safe to be able to come and talk to us. I know usually for us at our house that's 
at nighttime, you know, when we sit down with our boys, that's kind of when I get all the goods that's, you know, <laughs> the things that have kind of happened in the day. And, um, and I think, too, also for adults to communicate with each other and to, you know, bounce ideas around and, and to kind of be curious about different ways of reaching our kids, you know, and empowering them. Finally, a, a comment, forgive me for interrupting. Uh, in looking at your books and looking at your website, it strikes me as these are tools which are more of an organic method for communicating and empowering kids. I mean, back to a lot of communication, showcasing successes, playing upon the positive uh, instead of the negative. I mean, they have to learn lessons, and yes, discipline is part of it. But what I gathered in looking for these books, looking through these books and looking at the website has been this sense of communication and looking forward. Is that considered, would you consider that a fair analysis? Yeah, for sure. And and helping children to realize that they have a choice, you know, in how they, you know, react to things. I mean, it's okay to feel sappy, ha- happy, sad, mad, all of those emotions. And just kind of giving them that, putting that thought in their head that they actually do have ultimate control over over how they choose to react to things. And I think once kids get that, it is a really empowering thing. I know, you know, even as an adult, that's an empowering way to look at life as well. Okay, and i got to ask you this then before you go. What about taking ownership when you do something, you made a choice to do something, and it wasn't a good choice, taking ownership for that. How do you do 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 that constructively without breaking their spirit? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. It, definitely, kids need to have consequences, and if they don't, I mean, I know that just even in my household, um, if I kind of let up on things, it's like they'll very quickly, <laughs> you know, begin to sense that, and it's, um, you know, I think it's kind of our due diligence to do that as parents and adults with kids, because life is that way. When they're adults out there on their own, like, there is consequences for everything we do and so you know I think a little bit of tough love is is you know important an important thing and to kind of get on board you know who if you have a two parent family to kind of get on board with what that looks like too I know doesn't hurt as well <laughs> Emily ethics we did a program on ethics in September at Embry Riddle and we brought in an ESPN specialist and used one of our coaches Steve Ritter and talked about ethics in sports my question to you is do you think that ethics is something that has to be taught to young children, perhaps through your books, or is it something that comes naturally? Um, I think that it, you know, is a process, really. Like, it, it is something that we teach our kids through ordinary day-to-day things, like, um, you know, just in how we treat other people and things that, you know, just basic things that come up. Like, even, you know, if they're, if a, child accidentally hurt somebody else like it's about like that's a great you know teachable moment to say like hey you may not have meant to do that but if you see your you know to kind of show you know spell it out for them what empathy kind of is and give them those examples as they're happening so i think yeah it is it's a definite process ethics and everything that we do if you'd like to learn more about the books that have been written by Emily Medill, Believe in Yourself, Inspirational Stories for Adults and Children, go to emilymedill.com and read her blog, which comes out every week as well. You may find there's something in there for your family as well. Looking for a, a positive beginning to 2015, Emily Medill, our guest today on WNDB. And if you'd like to learn more, go to the website. Emily, thanks so much for being with us today, and happy holidays to you and your family. You as well.